Hi, my name's Johnny, and today we are taking a look at some underrated base brands. Now, when you're making your decision about what base to buy, there are so many out there to choose from, and there are some that sometimes slip under the radar, unfairly so, compared to some of their competitors. So I want to shine some well-deserved love and light on some of these brands that you might not have considered before, but actually really worth looking into. Now there might be some brands that you think are missing, missing, and there are some brands like Sire and Harley Benton that you might want to see on this list. Although they are really good and deserve to be shouted about, I feel like nowadays they are quite rated. They're good and everyone knows it. Now two things before we get started. Number one, these are all opinions. I will repeat myself. <laughs> these are all opinions. So if you disagree with what I say, just don't be a knob in the comments. It's pretty easy. And number two is make sure you have liked this video and subscribed for weekly base content. First up on my list is Gibson. <laughs> First up is Jackson. Jackson are actually owned by Fender and you might associate them with metal and like really heavy guitars and really wacky shapes and pointy headstocks and in some instances that is the case. But beyond this traditional pedigree, there is a wealth of incredible basses in their lineup. I've had a Spectra bass on this channel and also a four string concert bass. And these are both really good, especially that Spectra bass. Those were those. They're less than 400 pounds new, and for that, you're getting an amazing five string bass. 35 inch scale, really comfy neck, and a really, really usable preamp. The gut artist models, we've got like Thunderbird inspired models. I'd really recommend checking out their lineup. It kind of ranges from 350 pounds all the way up and over a thousand pounds. Now they did commit a serious bass crime in producing the concert bass or the Jackson backer, the Jack and backer, um, and especially the five string is just an assault on the eyes. But they have just redeemed themselves by bringing it out in this insane baby blue and this really awesome kind of matte army green. If you like hearing about the latest bases releases and don't want to miss out on announcements like this, make sure you go and check out my podcast specifically for bass players. Now, speaking of brands that match the metal genre, Schecter are next on my list for underrated brands. I have never, ever, ever played a bad Schecter. Again, they do still have some bases like the Omen series that, you know, sounds a bit metal and is kind of modeled in that modern contemporary style. They do have an entire retro collection. E bases, jazz bases, they've done Thunderbirds before. They've got a really, really cool short scale called the Band even a semi-hollow that's very similar to the Jack Cassidy. In my experience, Schecter have always been fantastic with really punchy sounding instruments that play super, super well. Prices have gone up over the years though, normally range between 700 and 1500 pounds. But if you keep your eyes open on the second hand market, you can normally get some really good deals on some like mid 2000s Schecter gear, as they are mostly using really premium aftermarket hiccups and hardware in their bases. Next up, we're going a little bit more affordable and we're gonna talk about SX. Originally named Essex bases, I believe. SX are normally found in your local music shops or sold for pennies on Facebook Marketplace by Karen down the road. But I consider SX a real hidden gem in the affordable market. Again, every single one I've picked up have felt really good. You might want to replace things like the tuners down the line, but that's super standard for this kind of price range because new, these are around 200 pounds. But with any affordable brand like this, they are mostly uh, P and jazz based copies, but they have got this cool Warwick bass in there as well. I think during the first year of running this channel, I reviewed a blue SXP bass and I kind of wish I still had that thing around because it was super, super nice. If there's any beginners out there, they are a fantastic purchase for you to have for your first base. Moving on, but staying in a similar realm is the brand Vintage. They've been around for a long time, but I definitely feel like there is a stigma towards them where people see the name on the headstock and just go, I actually think there's some really, really good instruments in there. And they've got a super diverse lineup. Stingrays, Fretless, Jazz Bass, 
D bass, violin bass, you name it, they've got it. I'd particularly like to highlight this awesome looking silver burst and jazz bass that they produce. Really solid basses, great for modding. What else could you ask for for a price range between 200 and 300 pounds? Next up is a brand that I think is criminally underrated and that is G&L. G&L stands for George Fullerton and Leo Fender. George being G, Leo being the L. After leaving Fender, Leo went on to start Music Man and then G&L. I think I got that the right way around. So you're getting that kind of pedigree that we know and love from Fender guitars. All those original ideas that you had with Fender have just been built on with G&L. G&L is the one that hasn't really gone down in history so much compared to like classic P&Js and then the Stingray. But then G&L is mostly kind of variants of those basses as we'll look into now. G&L offer more affordable range in the Tribute series that's kind of like your Squire to Fender and then they make their Fullerton USA made basses which go over the thousand pound and then into custom shop. You've got basses in there as well like the L2000 and this one isn't really for me because it's like Music Man pickups but with a more sophisticated preamp in there uh, with a P bass neck and for some people that is going to be perfect but I really really love the LB100 that's kind of like their staple P bass. I've had a couple of GNLs on this channel including the Tribute series SB2. Really great sounding PJ bass equipped with these really really nice MFD pickups. So if you're a big Fender fan but looking for something of the similar quality but slightly different style then GNL is definitely the one for you. And last but no means least is the brand that does it all. You want a bike? Get a Yamaha. You want a fridge? Get a Yamaha. You want a toilet? Get a Yamaha. You want a bass? Get a Yamaha. Yamaha are continuously underrated for their guitars and basses and all the musical instruments they do I think. They have got a really impressive history of making fantastic basses, PC basses, especially throughout the 80s. The BB bass is probably their most famous one. The modern ones today consist of the 424, 434, the 734. So you've got modern BB basses going throughout the price range and these come with really really premium features for not that much money. For about £450 at the minute the BB434 is a fantastic offer. You get this chunky but really nice feeling neck, really interesting string through body, six bolt construction on the neck and loads more as well as offering artist models like the Billy Sheehan bass if you're into something a bit more modern, they've also got you covered with the TRBX bases. And again, for beginners, there are some fantastic buys for you with Yamaha. Four strings, five strings, active, passive, humbuckers, single coils. There's so much on offer from this brand and I would really recommend checking them out. And not overlooking Yamaha because you've seen Pete down the road driving a bike with it on. So there's my list for the top underrated bass brands. If there's one you think that I missed out on this list, then please leave a comment down below letting everyone know what you think the most underrated bass brand is. Once again, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.